rated T for teen. Sega. My favorite Hulk moment was very early on, probably in the first issue, when he first turned into the Hulk. Because I had told Jack Kirby, who was the artist, great artist, I had said, now remember, I want to get this man to become a huge, strong-looking monster, but he still has to look man-like and not too gruesome. You know, he's almost a good-looking monster, but he's not really good-looking. And I figured, what is Jack possibly going to do with that? And when he drew the change from Bruce Banner to the Hulk, I just loved it, and I'll never forget that. Showing the Hulk really getting enraged and being able to do things that are, you know, above and beyond even, you know, the rest of the Marvel Universe. I mean, he's just, you know, he is the strongest there is. Hulk can weaponize anything in the environment that he can come across. We're gonna throw you right into the action. The Incredible Hulk is all about rage and destruction. So in order to bring this unique character to life, the development team at Edge of Reality in Austin, Texas, began with the basics. There's definitely the signature moves that the Hulk does, the big ground pound move, sonic clap move. Pick up pedestrians and throw them across the street and picking up a, a taxi cab and smashing into a building until the building comes down. Complementing these classic moves, Edge of Reality has introduced an accomplishment system known as feats. Well, as you um, go through these feats, you need to earn a certain number of them. And let's say it's four. When I hit the number four on the feats, it will unlock a certain ability uh, in the game or give me access to new things in the game that I didn't have before. In addition to the feats, the Incredible Hulk can also use the environment to his advantage. Climbing on the building is actually really fun and easy to do. He can weaponize a lot of stuff. He'll learn to use new weapons as the game goes on. He can take down a street lamp and then pick it up and use it like a baseball bat. Then you pick up the pole and you throw it like a spear. He has this uh, kind of bull rush move. We get your rage meter high enough and he's just kind of sprinting through uh, the streets in New York and anything that comes in his path just doesn't, doesn't survive. You can rip a bus apart and then he'll have like two pieces on each hand and he can punch with them and, and throw things around that way. Everyone wants to take down a building sometimes and everyone wants to be able to smash robots halfway across the city. He creates a lot of damage. In order to provide the Incredible Hulk with such a huge playground, the development team had to tackle perhaps the biggest challenge of them all. It's an open world kind of gameplay in Manhattan. So go and do whatever you want. You have this city that is filled with an enormous amount of content. Go and do stuff, and we'll have the city react to whatever you just did. It's one thing to build Manhattan, you know. Um, it's another thing to build a Manhattan that can be fully destructible. We're being able to make a much more alive and full New York City uh, than we had ever before. So we've got a full New York City. You can go and explore. You can, you know, smash. You can do missions inside it. You can go and help people. You can throw taxi cabs, whatever it is you like to do. We've actually purchased a model of Manhattan from a company that does work for NASA and for other government agencies. And we're basing New York City on that. So our Manhattan is extremely realistic. This real world Manhattan may have been a huge undertaking, but the end results are more than worth it. You're going to be able to climb to the top of a building and knock somebody off and pick up a piece of debris and throw it down, jump down, follow it, create a crater in the ground and uh, essentially wreak havoc in the city. 